Who's going to win America's election? Today was the day of a thousand polls. It's a question everyone is trying to answer. Joe Biden up over President Trump. Donald Trump is within the margin of error. Most of the focus is on the presidency, but there's another crucial race. With Democrats and Republicans battling for control of the Senate in 2020. The Democrats hope this is their chance to win back the Senate. After five years, the Democrats are in with a shot of taking back America's Senate. But with 35 individual races to follow, the result is harder to predict than the presidency. So how do you work out who will win? The Economist might have the answer. Control of Congress can make or break a presidency, especially one intent on delivering change. And if you just look at the presidency of Barack Obama, he passed a bunch of major legislation during the first two years of his term. The health care reform, also the financial reform. And then once the Republicans won the House in 2010, that was that. No more legislative achievements for six years. Mitch McConnell, the Senate Majority Leader at the end of Barack Obama's time in office, saw blocking Democratic motions as part and parcel of his job. I was in charge of what we did the last two years of the Obama administration. I give you full credit for that. There is no doubt in my mind that if Joe Biden wins the presidency, Mitch McConnell will respond to his nominees and legislative initiatives exactly the way he did to Barack Obama, which is to block everything that he possibly can. There are 35 Senate seats up for grabs in November. The Republicans are defending 23 seats, the Democrats, 12. To take control, the Democrats will need to gain at least four, three if Biden wins the presidency, as the vice president decides on tied votes. But trying to predict the result is not an easy task. There are so many different races with so many different candidates and so many different polls. I mean, there's just no way that one person could keep track of it all in their head, and fortunately we have computers to do that for us. Earlier this year, Dan began work on creating a model to predict the result of the Senate vote. It was probably a good three months of nonstop work, including nights and weekends this July, August, September. It's about as big as a project as, as anything I've ever done. All of that work for one crucial number, the percentage chance of a victory. As of October 6th, our model gave the Democrats a 71% chance of winning the Senate. If you click on the link above, it'll take you to the most up-to-date forecasting. But why trust this number more than the polls? The Economist model takes in two sources of information to produce its predictions. The first is those polls. You can get quite accurate predictions of how legislative elections are going to go using polls when you have a lot of quality polls taken really close to an election. The problem is the quality and quantity of polls for Senate races vary widely state by state, and every race counts. That leaves you very, very in the dark in races that don't have much or any polling. So the model also looks at a range of historical factors Things like a state's voting history, whether a candidate is the incumbent, their political experience, or how much money they've raised. Political science nerds call these factors fundamentals. You can produce predictions of results in these races based on all of those sort of benchmark quote unquote fundamental factors uh, without seeing a single poll. But first, the model has to estimate the impact each of those factors is likely to have on the result. To work that out, it tests it on an election for which we already know the result. You say, OK, let's give our model the data from every election year except for, say, 1976. And based on everything we knew from every year but 1976, what would we have predicted for 1976? It does terribly. You say, oops, that was overfit. What were the least useful variables in here, the ones we could most afford to do without, and let's get rid of them. And then even the really strong variables, 
let's maybe trim their effect size by like 10% or something because you just never know. And you basically have the computer just try a zillion of these permutations until it finds the amount of shrinkage that yields the best predictions on the unseen data. Why go to all this trouble? Because projections that combine polling data with fundamental factors tend to be much more stable than those looking at polling alone. Take the 1992 election, where George H.W. Bush lost the presidency to Bill Clinton. This line marks his eventual share of the vote. But in the months before the election, you'd have been hard pressed to foresee that the polls were all over the place. The Economist model would have been within the margin of error throughout that election year. So much for elections that have long since been decided. What about the 2020 Senate race? Here's an example of how we rate the chances that a Republican senator, like Susan Collins from Maine, will retain her seat. Collins won the 2014 election for her Senate seat by a landslide, suggesting it's more likely she would be voted in again. She also has the advantage of incumbency, something particularly important in Maine. But the Democratic candidate, Sarah Gideon, has raised more money in fundraising. Based on these and other fundamentals, the model had Collins eight points ahead. But that's not the end of the story. And then each time a poll comes in, you update your prediction. It will move incrementally in the direction of whatever the new poll you're adding says. There have been a number of high quality polls in Maine, the kind of poll our model weighs heavily. With those factored in, the forecast swings in favor of her Democratic challenger. So which other races should you keep an eye on? According to the Economist model, Alabama is very likely to switch from Democrat to Republican. Whilst Arizona, Colorado and North Carolina, like Maine, have a good chance of flipping the other way. If Biden wins the presidency, this map would give the Democrats their Senate majority. Of course, there's another challenge in predicting the result of these or any other race in the 2020 election, however good the model. While in a pandemic, votes cast by mail are expected to set a new record this November. While the experts say voting by mail is safe, it's yet another example of how it's complicated and it could be even more challenging come November. My model does not make any explicit adjustments for the fact that this election is occurring during the COVID pandemic. I think COVID is a huge deal, it's obviously kill a huge amount of people, and of course it will cause changes in the way we vote that could indeed have significant, unexpected, uh, you know, unmodelable effects. But, uh, I'll need to see the evidence. <laughs> Without that evidence, predicting how the pandemic's going to affect this election would call for forces far beyond science. I'm Jan Rosenhack, The Economist's data editor. You can keep up to date on all of our election coverage by clicking on the link opposite. Thank you for watching.